Hi everybody. In an economy, if all labour markets were perfectly competitive, there would be no differences in wages between professions at all because of two key assumptions we make of perfectly competitive labour markets. We assume that all workers are homogenous and we assume that there is perfect mobility of labour. Let's take an example. Let's take two professions, uh, train drivers and lawyers. Let's say that for some reason uh, there was a slight difference in wages between the two, yet both professions were perfectly competitive labour markets. So let's say that the wages for lawyers was increasing and was higher than the wages for train drivers. In a perfectly competitive labour market, what would happen? Train drivers would leave their job and become lawyers. They are free to do so because they have the skills, perfect skills, to transfer over to become lawyers and we assume that they are perfectly mobile, occupationally and geographically, so they can actually go and take that job regardless of where it's located. That means that the supply of train drivers would decrease pushing up that wage and the supply of lawyers would increase pushing down that wage, meaning that wages were then equalised between the two professions and we would get rid of any wage differential that might have occurred. So in a perfectly competitive labour market there would be no wage differentials. But in the real world we know that there are wage differentials and that tells us there must be some market imperfections. These labour markets must not be perfectly competitive if wage differentials exist. So you're probably thinking then why do we study perfectly competitive labour markets? Why do we understand wage determination there? We understand that and we learn it because it gives us a benchmark to compare real world labour markets to. We don't understand why there are wage differentials unless we know what the characteristics of perfectly competitive labour markets are. Therefore, what must be going wrong in real world labour markets that allows for this wage differential? And in the real world, there are five market imperfections which can help us understand why wage differentials occur. The first one is that labour is not homogenous, like perfectly competitive labour market theory tells us. All workers are different and therefore they can have different MRPs, therefore the wages they get can be different. At the same time we assume that all work workers are appropriate to take all jobs out there in the economy. There might be some professions where workers are not suitable to take that job and therefore supply of workers, supply of labour can be different in different professions affecting the wage rate, allowing for a wage differential. We assume in perfectly competitive labour markets that there is no discrimination no age discrimination, no sex discrimination, no race discrimination. In the real world, even though there are laws that prevent this happening, it still takes place. And that can mean that different workers are paid different wages. Another imperfection is that we assume in perfectly competitive labour markets that workers will base their decisions on whether to work on wages full stop. In the real world, it's more than just the wage that can determine whether a worker takes a job. Workers will consider non-monetary considerations significantly too. So they'll consider things like, you know, the pension plan, whether they get a company car, the number of holidays they get, the potential for promotion, the overtime, uh, the amount of breaks that they can get, flexibility in working hours, all of these kind of things they will consider quite strongly. Absolutely they would. And that might determine alongside the wage whether they go and take that job, not just the wage itself. So therefore, if the non-monetary considerations are fantastic, you would expect there to be a large supply of workers in that industry driving down wages to an extent. Whereas, flip the coin, if there are professions which, you know, the working conditions are lousy, very antisocial hours, very tough working conditions, you would expect that there will be a lack of supply in those industries and wages would be higher. We call that a compensating wage differentials. In professions where it's not so attractive to work, wages tend to be higher, a compensating wage differential. You get a higher wage to compensate for you working under such tough and difficult working conditions. Whereas the more pleasant the working conditions are, the lower wages tend to be a compensating wage differential. Understand that, and that is a big market imperfection, considering that you know we don't just base our decisions to work on wages. We look at non-monetary considerations, which in a perfectly competitive labour market, we don't really take into account. This is very important. The assumption that labour is perfectly mobile is definitely not true in the real world. 
Labour is often occupationally immobile. Not all workers have the same skills, the same qualifications, the same kind of productivity. That's absolutely not true. There are some professions where the qualifications required exclude a lot of workers. A lot of workers may not have the right skills to take those jobs. You think um, working as a doctor, the level of skills required are huge, qualifications required are huge, and that restricts the supply of labour, pushing up wages considerably. So any time there are large skills required or tough qualifications required or training periods and training required is very, very tough to get and long, often you see wages pushed up because then there is occupational immobility. Not all workers can then take those jobs because they don't have the right skills required. At the same time, there might be regional vari variances in wages and that might persist because there is geographical immobility of labour. Uh, maybe workers don't fancy moving halfway across the country to take a job, even if the wage rate is high. And that means that, again, the supply of workers might be restricted and wages can stay different for persistent periods of time if workers are not uh, geographically transferable. And we assume in perfectly competitive labour markets that all workers have got perfect knowledge of market conditions. They know where wages are high, so then they'll move to get that, to get that wage and operate and take a job in that given profession. In the real world, they may not know what wages are in different professions and therefore whether to change jobs and to take a job in a different profession. Uh, knowledge may be imperfect of market conditions. Another key market imperfection is that trade unions can exist. And trade unions bargain for higher wages. Workers often on their own find it difficult to bargain for higher wages. They don't have the power by themselves. But if lots and lots of workers in a given profession join together and a trade union is behind them, the trade union can bargain on behalf of all of these workers. So the bigger the trade union, i.e. the bigger the membership in a trade union, the more this trade union has got the bargaining power to ask for higher wages and distort perfectly competitive market outcomes and thus push up wages. So in professions where there are strong trade unions, there is lots of uh, members of a trade union. You can expect that wages can be distorted and pushed up, again leading to wage differentials, compared to industries and professions where trade unions do not exist. And what if there are monopsonies, i.e. there is one dominant employer in a given profession that employs a big, big chunk of all workers in that industry. That monopsony has got wage setting power and the monopsy, monopsony may use that wage setting power to drive down wages. Again, so that means in that industry, wages might be lower compared to other industries where there aren't monopsonies existing. That could be a big reason for wage differentials. So now you understand, guys, that in the real world, some of the assumptions that we made of perfectly competitive labour markets may not hold. There might be some market imperfections. And where market imperfections hold, that could be the reason why there are wage differentials. So understand the different market imperfections, link that to different wage differentials, Make sure you can apply to different examples. That's what I'm going to do in the next videos. Watch those and see how I apply these different conditions to different markets where there are wage differentials and you'll be absolutely rocking for your exam. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all in those next videos where I apply these to different markets and to different wage differentials. I will see you then.